A very good evening to you. It's 8 o'clock. I'm Gareth Edwards. For all of those celebrating Christmas today, from me and the entire team, we hope you've had a wonderful Christmas day. These are your top stories, and it's good news, as Christmas bundles of joy are delivered at just the right time. But our new dawn does appear to be on the horizon. And a message of hope and also of warnings about the future of South Africa from the Anglican Archbishop. At first, we start with this. Getting the gift of life may be the ultimate Christmas Day present. More than 50 Christmas babies have been welcomed in Gauteng alone. Provincial Health MEC Gwen Ramakhopa spends some time at the Sebo Keng Hospital meeting some of the province's newest additions. Sekho Hacho Moachi has the story. Merry Christmas! Gauteng Health MEC Dr. Gwen Ramakhopa began her Christmas visit at the Sebo Keng Hospital in the Val. Here, five babies were born by midday three girls and two boys. Ramakhopa offered words of advice to new moms. I've also advised mothers to breastfeed for six months exclusively. Uh, those I've spoken to are not uh, working and it is possible to do, to do so. And this helps the baby to be stronger because breast uh, milk uh, also protects them from infections and uh, protects their guts as well uh, from uh, harsh uh, uh, milk uh, that is not from, from their parents, from their mother in particular. So we wish all the, the parents and the babies well and also not forgetting their gran the grandparents. Ramakhopa is also urging fathers to be more hands-on during the birth of their children so they can also bond with them. All the mothers I have spoken to, I ask them where the fathers are because it's so important for this uh, wonderful moment of uh, the birth of your baby to be shared by both parents. And um, some of the fathers are still at work, and yet the country has got paternity leave rights. So we want to call on uh, all employers uh, to give uh, the fathers paternity leaves, and the fathers, when they have paternity leaves, to come to be next to their mothers. It's an extra special Christmas for these mothers who have welcomed their little ones into the world. Many of them say they are grateful to have delivered healthy and bouncy babies without complications. Tseho Hajo Moachi, Sibukeng Hospital. And one of South Africa's smallest babies to survive a premature birth is spending her very first Christmas at home. You might know the name of baby Hope Daniels, uh, born at just 24 weeks and is considered one of the country's, tiny, one of the country's tiniest micro-babies. Uh, my colleague Lester Kivett caught up with her and her family. She's a Christmas miracle. Born three months before time and weighing only 300 grams, that's smaller than a can of cold drink. Did it also get the baby Hope Daniels was the smallest ever baby born in South Africa by weight. After spending the first nine months of her life in hospital, she was discharged last weekend. She's home now and her parents are thrilled. It's actually, it's very exciting. For 10 years we've been, um, we've been trying to have a baby and uh, for 10 years it was only yeah. us, us two. And now we've got our bundle of joy with us. It's, it's, exactly. I can't describe it. It's, it's, it's overwhelming. The Daniels say they won't be receiving throngs of Christmas visitors as Hope's immune system is still too vulnerable. She comes first now. Her needs is first. Yes. So we're going to be at home. This is our first Christmas as a family. So we're going to spend it together today. Yes. Just the three of us. Hope will need to undergo monthly hospital visits and doctors say it'll be some time before she's on par with other children her age. Lester Kivett, Cape Town. Well, Anglican Archbishop Tabo Makhope has called for vigilance even under President Cyril Ramaphosa's administration. He was delivering his Christmas sermon at Cape Town St. George's Cathedral. Maloko Maloto has the story. He knows and we know that President Zuma and his cohorts of corruption have been behaving as if the South African Treasury is their own. This time last year, Anglican Archbishop Thabo Makoba's message to newly elected ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa was straightforward. Fire Jacob Zuma. With Ramaphosa now at the apex of government, Makoba says there's a sense of renewed energy and it appears the country is entering a new era. 
Despite feeling more hope-filled this year, we must remain vigilant and not be captured by those in power the way we sometimes have been in the past. But our new dawn does appear to be on the horizon, and we are grateful for that. But he says crusades against corruption and maladministration are simply not enough. But how far will good, clean government take us when people are killed on the picket lines, stabbed in our schools, beaten up in service delivery protests, and assassinated in disputes over who will hold public office? Makoba is also calling for moral leadership from business leaders, politicians and others to create a better and violent free society. Molo Kumuloto, Johannesburg. Well, ice cream has been melting faster than even you can eat it as a heat wave grips parts of the country. Gauteng, the northwest and the free state are experiencing temperatures ranging between 30 and 35 degrees today and tomorrow. Full weather forecast later. But now authorities are calling on people to be extra vigilant. Here's Govan Whittles with more. The heat wave began on the 24th of December and is expected to finish on Boxing Day. But with the heat wave comes its own challenges. For the Johannesburg Emergency Services, it means that extra personnel are being placed on standby and they have to respond to things such as drowning, people suffering from sunstroke, as well as felt fires. I'm joined now by the spokesperson for the Johannesburg Emergency Management Services, uh, Mr. Robert Mulaudzi, just to tell us a little bit more about what they're doing during the heat wave. Uh, Mr. Mulaudzi, what exactly are you advising residents during this heat wave? Yeah, we advise all our residents out there to stay hydrated, uh, drink uh, lots of water uh, during these extremely uh, hot uh, temperatures so that uh, we can avoid situations like uh, where they will suffer from heat cramps, uh, heat exhaustion, which might also cause uh, heat stroke, as you said earlier on. And also from our side, we also want to urge all our elderly uh, residents out there to stay you know, indoors to avoid uh, direct sunlight, especially between uh, around 11 and 3, because that's where we're having excessive, uh, you know, hot, hot, very hot uh, uh, temperatures. What are the most common um, incidents that the emergency services respond to during a heat wave uh, based on the past experience? Yeah, they, it will be firstly the, our felt fires incidents, uh, they are on the increase, and also our uh, drowning incidents, especially in our uh, informal areas, because we still find young kids uh, trying to uh, swim in our river streams and dams. In most cases, they end up drowning in this, uh, you know, the river streams, and it, it takes us a lot of our resources to call, try and search for them if they drown in those areas. These vehicles and the emergency services personnel have been placed on standby because of the increased frequency of heat waves in Gauteng. And meteorologists say they expect this to continue across the country. Well, it's not only Gauteng, it's also the central and northeastern part of South Africa. Many provinces are affected by this heat wave. It's due to an upper level high pressure, keeping those conditions stable, but also allowing for very dry and warm air to really sit across the interior. And there's nothing really that moves it over the next couple of days. So until that happens, we'll see that hot weather continuing. But there is some hope. They say they're making progress in educating ordinary residents about what needs to happen during a heat wave and how to make sure they stay safe. Govan Whittles, Johannesburg. And we'll bring you a full weather forecast later here on E! News. Coming up in a moment, muted Christmas celebrations, unfortunately, in Zimbabwe, as that country grapples with shortages of the most basic of commodities. Welcome back to E! News at 8. Let's move to news from beyond our borders now, and it's a bleak festive season for Zimbabweans. Uh, Christmas celebrations certainly muted there because a shortage of basic commodities are like bread and fuel. Opposition leader Nelson Chamisa is now calling on President Emerson Imnangagwa to take urgent action. Zimbabwe's economic crisis has seen most people struggling to travel for Christmas holidays. Those who wished to do so braved sleeping in long winding queues 
for fuel and other basic commodities. Chamisa visited the main Harare bus terminus in Mbare. He met a few travelers and described this year's Christmas period as the worst ever for Zimbabweans. Uh, it is a bleak Christmas, you know, of all the Christmases we have ever had. It's very difficult to even share anything because people have nothing. There is no money in the pockets, people have no goods or products uh, in, the, in the shops. You know that uh, it's difficult to have uh, a Christmas without soft drinks, without Coca-Cola, without Fanta. Those drinks are not there. So it's a tough period. Fuel shortages in Zimbabwe have had a knock-on effect. Doctors have embarked on a month-long strike. They are demanding enough fuel to travel to work and want improved working conditions. Hey, our, the situation here is deteriorating. We can't, we don't have any diesel to go to our rural areas. Nothing. Right now I'm coming from the queues. It, it's empty. So what, what are we going to do? We want Nelson Chamisa to rule this country. My Christmas is boring. Because I, I, came here, I came here last, last night and then I slept here. And uh, I'm waiting for beers. Deputy Information Minister Energy Mutodi says the economic crisis is temporary. He says measures have been put in place to address the shortages. Fuel supply situation is being prioritized as well as provision of basic medical drugs for, 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 for people to access a, a good health. So it's something that government is aware of and we are working time to normalize the situation. But of course, demand tends to increase during Christmas time and during New Year's, New Year's holidays. But the striking doctors and radiographers say they are not going back to work until their grievances are met. The health service body has, however, suspended 500 striking doctors for refusing to go back to work. Pindai Duwe, Harare, Zimbabwe. Well, Pope Francis is praying for world peace, particularly in conflict-ridden regions in the Middle East. While delivering his Christmas Day speech at the Vatican, the pontiff said peaceful solutions to the Palestinian and Israeli conflict must be found. May it enable Israelis and Palestinians to resume dialogue and undertake a journey of peace that can put an end to a conflict that for over 70 years has rent the land chosen by the Lord to show his face of love. May the child Jesus allow the beloved and beleaguered country of Syria once again to find fraternity after these long years of war. May the international community work decisively for a political solution that can put aside divisions and partisan interests so that the Syrian people, especially all those who were forced to leave their own lands and seek refuge elsewhere can return to live in peace in their own country. My thoughts turn to Yemen in the hope that the truce brokered by the international community may finally bring relief to all those children and people exhausted by war and famine. I think too of Africa, where millions of persons are refugees or displaced and in need of humanitarian assistance and food security. May the Holy Child, the King of Peace, silence the clash of arms and allow a new dawn of fraternity to rise over the entire continent. And so off the back of that call for an end to conflict, we bring you this international news. It has been a deadly Christmas in the Middle East. An attack on Libya's foreign ministry has claimed three lives. Eleven other people have been wounded. A car bomb exploded within the precinct. Two suicide bombers then entered the building. Authorities do suspect uh, that uh, their ICE, uh, IS militant group is behind the attack. Indeed, no doubt you want to see what's happening with your weather for tomorrow. Going to be very hot details in a moment. And then while some South Africans just trying to survive the scorching temperatures, uh, these German Santas are actually braving icy waters. But it's all in the name of tradition.
Welcome back. Let's see just how hot it's going to be tomorrow. Here's Louis Fernandez. Hello, everyone. It was an uncomfortably hot Christmas day for much of the country's interior with a heat wave in place over the region and that continues into your day of goodwill. While over the Western Cape, a couple of cold fronts will reach the area, bringing some rain to Cape Town and the surrounding parts. There will once again be a few afternoon thunder showers developing over the eastern interior of the country. Those thunderstorms dissipate towards the evening and then we're going to have some light rain spreading towards the garden route as well as other areas in the eastern Cape. The heat wave persists for some parts of the northern Cape including Kimberley with a maximum of 40 degrees Celsius, a bit of cloud for Alexander Bay otherwise dry over the province. For the Western Cape, on the other hand, we'll see some rain moving in for some areas, especially in the west as the front moves in. And then by evening, rain reaches Mossel Bay, George, as well as towards Plate. A mostly dry start to the day in the Eastern Cape, but in the afternoon, there could be a few thunderstorms for the interior. It is going to be a very hot day for the region. And we see some extreme temperatures for the KwaZulu-Natal interior, including Ladysmith and Newcastle. And it's also going to be very hot for the rest of the province as well. A few thunder showers expected into Mpubalanga, but it stays dry for Standerton with a maximum of 37 degrees. And temperatures will be reaching the 40 degree mark for many parts of Limpopo with only isolated thunder showers in places. A mostly dry and extremely hot day expected for the northwest. Please do take care in the area. Stay out of that midday sunshine and keep hydrated. And we're also going to have dangerously hot conditions continuing for some parts of the free state. And finally for Gauteng, it's going to be an extremely hot day in the area as well with very patchy thunder showers possible in the north. Let's move ahead to your forecast for Thursday and it stays very hot for the interior of the country with a few thunder showers in the east. Rain likely from Cape Town all the way through to PE and East London. And then on Friday temperatures will finally start dropping on the high felt as wetter weather returns to the region. That's all from the Weather Centre. Happy Holidays. And finally, a group of Germans decked out as Father Christmas taking to some icy waters today. The annual dip in the lake uh, is a tradition, of course, for them. The Berlin Seals have been doing it for nearly 40 years. This year, the water wasn't that cold. Uh, not cold for them anyway. Minus 5 degrees uh, Celsius. All agreeing, though, not sure how, uh, that they still had quite a lot of fun. So sure, a few of us could have enjoyed that dip, uh, especially in Johannesburg today. A reminder of your top stories uh, before we say goodnight. Christmas bundles of joy uh, today liver, delivered at just the right time. And a message of hope and warnings about the future of South Africa from the Anglican Archbishop. As always, my thanks to the team behind the scenes. Until tomorrow night, have a good evening. Bye-bye.